They're almost not paintings. I see them as things that shift from being an object to a painting. I want the viewer to have almost a physical journey from the object nature of the painting to, to the surface of the painting and then into the illusion of the painting. I want them to be sort of sucked in like it's, it's a world that they can explore and play in. That line between the everyday and now and the, and the world of the imagination is very soft, very blurry, very penetrable. And, and that's really what I want to have happen with these. It's like, this is a solid piece of wood. It's got a certain thickness. It's got a certain shape. And then you work across the surface, and there are these illusions of shallow moves that come out into the world of the viewer. And then we shift back into space. We're, we're sucked into that world. And, and it's a beautiful world on the other side. The first thing that comes is probably a concept. I say, I want to make an object or a mechanism that flaps. And I'm going to research how an ornithopter flaps its wings off a crankshaft. Once I know that, I start to develop a machine in my notebooks and then before that machine gets quite finalized I start saying well it also has to be part of a painting it needs architecture to work with it I need to design that too because these are on shaped panels I need to work it out pretty well so I actually do draft things out and many decisions are made at that time because I'm I'm really very interested in small Proportions, little proportions make a huge difference to me. I, I struggle over changes of half a millimeter at times on, on certain parts of the painting. I look at my drawings as working drawings, even though these are sort of fine line drafting. They're really kind of messy because I do a lot of my thinking at this stage too. Okay. Even as a child, I always made things, but I also always drew. Uh, but the two ideas were kind of separate. I developed very fine building technology, building skills. And I was also, you know, growing up in New York, always going to the museum. And I have to say, I didn't really care for paintings. I thought sculptures were way more interesting because they were the thing itself. And I said, I I'm really not interested in making pictures of things. Well, you know, you grow up in an apartment in Manhattan and, and space is an issue. And so sculptures just didn't seem very feasible. I, I was work, working on the skills and all through college I did take art courses even though I was an economics major. I went to Yale, uh, economics and math. And I went to UC Davis to work with Thiebaud and Arneson. And I, I did develop the representational skills, but I wasn't excited about painting until I discovered the abstract expressionists, because then a painting was an object. A painting was a thing that was also simultaneously an image. And, and that to me was what was, was really quite exciting. Something that happened as I started to become representational was I said, well, I have a problem with the rectangular format. Then the next thing that happened was that I started to go to wood, and then I was able to shape the piece so that it got away from the rectangular format. I go back and forth between drawing, building, drawing, and painting from the object. Certain objects, the ones that are rotational, the ones that go this way in relationship to the picture plane, I usually want to build those before I, I draw them because the perspective on it can be surprising. And the worst thing is shadow. 
because I was putting these objects in the paintings into hemispheres and the shadows that, they, that these complex objects cast on the inside of a dome. I had no way to predict that. But then as I was making them, I said, this is incredible fun. And, and so I've continued doing that. And I actually really look forward to, to building them. I actually think that playing is incredibly important for human beings. I often tell people that there's a, a real difference between playing and playing around. And play is about experimenting about how to learn how to live. The most important thing that we can do is fiddle with something. I think we all make every sort of mistake that we can possibly make. And the ones that learn from it are the ones that don't make the mistake again and figure out a, another route to go and find a new set of mistakes that they can make. And, and that's what these paintings are. They, they set up new problems. I teach at Rhode Island College. I've been there about 20 years. I'm teaching all levels of painting. I'm also teaching a course that's modified over time. It's called Contemporary Issues for the Artist. We find that our students need much more contemporary theory than they have. I'm talking more and more about professionalism and the relationship between museums and galleries. And you can never know too much about the professional side of this uh, business because it is a business. I talk about gardens a lot when I talk about looking at art because gardens are an organized form of nature and, and most people don't realize that there's a real sense of progression through a garden just like there's a progress through a piece. We have certain key interests that guide us. And I actually do think that if any artist who matures has been able to hone down the number of interests that are key to him or her. I've realized that the interests that I have are organizing space, creating activity or lifelikeness or animation within that space. It is also a conversation between me and a viewer. It's something to be shared. These are my vehicle for speaking with an unnamed companion. I mean unnamed because I don't know who might be looking at them. I may not be there, but the painting speaks for me. And I truly hope that these things bring intellectual and emotional pleasure to, to somebody else. Really, just somebody else.